welcome to my card art. I am here to show you always one of a kind projects that I make and it's here to motivate you and help you make your own card and your own art. Please subscribe and thanks so much for watching. Hello again. So I am back showing you the different ways I have created these adorable little bookmarks and I have used different paper. Some I have added hearts to and some just the paper by themselves were very, very cute. But each one of these little critters has something unique about them. You guys know elephants have long eyelashes? Well, they do. <laughs> so this guy has a very, very long eyelash and also, well, long eyelashes, I should say in plural, and lots of little hairs on their little behind. And then the sloth, it's so cute. So again, they have different colors and formats. This one has ladybugs and flowers. Anyways, these are all bookmarks and the other thing I discovered too while making this, like for example you can add the glitter to it, as you all know, um, and then I also added some puffy uh, white little tails, cotton tails for this little bunny. But what I discovered is some of these, when you cut them out, you can use obviously different stamps or different designs and that's what I did. This stamp is from Stampin' Up! and uh, I really liked the way this worked for the um, the shape see I just I just thought this was very very clever it, it works so um, let's see I put life looks beautiful on you <laughs> which it does it depends how you wear it but it looks beautiful so I took a regular pink piece of paper I added a bunch of dots and hearts tiny little things and decorated the dress and I, I made this dress long because the original stamp is short but I made it long and here's this one I didn't add the uh, ribbon yet and again this says uh, live with passion laugh out loud love deeply but you can take a lot of these bookmarks and use them uh, as, as, as many ways as you can possibly do see look at the different paints and flowers and uh, oh hi that's my dog snoring sorry <laughs> and you could take their eyes and, and modify them like see like I did here look this one says I am happy and it's got little flowers and these look how look how bright these flowers are I used uh, for these flowers um, uh, sharpies there we go <laughs> I use sharpies and same thing with the little red feet if you guys know frogs a lot of them have little red feet and they have the wildest color so I actually like frogs a whole lot and then I emboss some just like that let's see see this so it has texture and I did the same thing with this little guy and made him look very, very warty. See? He's got a lot of warts. <laughs> but then I put celebrate and a little bug so he has something to eat. And on the elephant bookmark, see? This one? I just really like this paper. I left it as such. This little guy has different eyes that I created for him. Little bum bum that looks a little different. And uh, let's see, back to the girl. This shape was for the froggy. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Nope. Sorry. Take that back. This shape was for the bunny. There we go. That was a bunny shape. I haven't decorated this one yet. I'm still working on the bottom portion. And this one has, you know, kind of hairy little eyes. It almost looks a little, little upset, <laughs> but it's not. This is not finished yet. I still have to decorate the bottom portion. But see, look, look how easy this is. This is the actual uh, uh, die cut that goes with this. And what did I put here? Oh, I, I did this already. I showed it to you. It says, life looks beautiful on you. But I wanted to see, let's see, one more thing. Where was it? Oh, yes. Okay, so for example, look at this little guy. See how different he looks? And all hairy and everything and a few little dots on the bookmark. And then this one has really deep eyes. I looked up sloths and they actually have green colors on them too. Can you believe this? Green. Wow, I didn't know that. They are in brownish, kind of grayish tone, and green. But I didn't make a green one. I figured nobody will believe me. <laughs> so I might do one later. But of course, frogs. I do know frogs because I like frogs a lot. And I did make some, some cute little frogs. And there's just a whole bunch of different ones here. So I wanted you to see this. Oh, and one more thing. Hold on. Let me, let me show you this one. Okay, so the way these guys work is when you have your book, you can insert. You can insert your little bookmark and you're able to hold your spot. Now, it doesn't hold it tremendously well because it's more for decorative purposes, but see, it does hold it. 
so it will not fall off. So the best way to do it, obviously, is close your book and then put your bookmark in inside. And some of them I use different ribbons. That's another way to kind of personalize them. See, look, kind of made the colors work. But most important is you do not want to add a lot of dimension uh, because if you guys read a lot, you know that with the books, if you have the book closed, then you can press through objects. So in other words, if this is a lot of dimension and bumps and lumps, then what happens is the um, book will get that imprint. In addition, you want to make sure that all of your uh, dyes that are using or your colorings is very, very dry. And if you have to add an extra coat on it, a lot of times they have sealants that you can use because you don't want to have something like this rub off. This one won't rub off, but you don't want to have anything rub off into your favorite book on the pages and make a hot mess and you don't want to go ahead and give that away. Some people use it for Bibles and some people have really old Bibles so you certainly don't want to stain them. But you can always give something really cute. You can write on it. I just I just hand wrote that. See? I'm happy. Isn't that adorable? I showed you this but I just like this one a lot. <laughs> and uh, here's another one. See? This one says, watch. You can lift his little feet up. I just thought that was so cute. Oh, and by the way, the other tip too, if you do this, make sure that you color the back of the feet so it, it doesn't look right if you have a green frog with, you know, white paper, you know, white paws on the back. But I put here, live with passion, laugh out loud, love deeply. Now, let me also give you this tip. You see this how I did? The light color and the dark color, I overstamped it. Well, this also can give a 3D effect. So if you guys do these light colors and dark colors over each other, just be careful because you could make it really psychedelic looking, <laughs> very 3D effect, and sometimes it might be even hard to reach. So just watch for that. But I just thought these were really, really cute. So I love these. I love the special creations too. And as I said, I don't, I don't have all of them done. This one is not finished yet, but look how cute the shadings are. And by the way, this is watercolor on regular cardstock. Nothing special, watercolor but you want to make sure you don't use a lot of water. Just very, very little. I have other tutorials on my other videos that'll show you how to watercolor without using too much of a water. And uh, I've even made a purple elephant and he's not done, of course, not yet. I'm still waiting for them to dry because you don't want to layer them when they're all wet because then it's a hot mess and it's a mush. So I hope this inspires you guys to make your own little wildlife. And see, these make really cute little gifts. So I wanted to give you guys these tips and I genuinely hope one day my card art will become your card art. And I always appreciate your comments, your subscriptions. Thanks, you guys. So I made this video to show you how I made the bookmarks. It's actually very, very easy. These are from Lawn Fawn. And she has add-on uh, little gadgets that go with this particular uh, stamp set. And you will see the bunnies and you will also see the little frogs, the front and the back portions. Now here's my first tip to you. The dies, many times they do come uh, put together so they're not separated apart. And sometimes I like to keep them together and see if I can make them work just by adjusting how I'm going to be stamping things. So here I'm lining up the stamp that lines up with the actual die that I didn't have to cut apart. And as you see, what you want to be careful with is if you're See here, the stamp, it's facing down because if your knife that is part of your die set is facing down, you want to make sure that your stamp is facing down because otherwise when you're trying to cut the image, it'll come out backwards. So in other words, face the stamp down with the cutting part of the die facing down as well and then position your stamp into your dies and then put the acrylic block right on top, just like so and you press it down and I just made sure it's sticky and lift off, that's it. So when you're going to stamp out your images, you get to have four cuts with very little effort. See how easy that is? And this is the sloth and this is the elephant and that's the same idea. I already lined up the stamps on that and I stamped out a whole bunch of them. And if you are missing some areas because your table was not flat or you just stamped incorrectly, don't worry, you can take a pen and fill it in and I used uh, different uh, stamps. I've used uh, different colorings. I used black for this one, but I used uh, a brown tone for the elephant and for the sloth. See? So you will see me. I'm doing a lot of different things here. So bear with me, but it will be a lot of fun. I promise. I give you a lot of ideas here. I am using um, the little chamois from Lawn Fawn to clean up my stamps after each use. 
so I don't have a hot mess and they are going to last me for a very long time because I like them. I am using Stampin' Up! I am using Distressed Inks. I'm using Mementos. I'm using Gelatos. <laughs> I will be watercoloring here. I'm also using a brush, so you will get to see a lot of ideas. If you're not familiar with this, these look like lipstick. It's not. Please don't put it on your lips. These are special gelato uh, tubes that have the uh, paint inside inside of the uh, these uh, little tubes. So what happens is you just add water. That's it. I'm going to demonstrate what I'm doing with this because at first time I saw these look a little different for me because they look like wax things, but they're not. They're actually uh, watercolor material. So I was blown away when I saw this. See the water right on top? And here I'm just adding my gelato sticks. They almost look like crayons, but they're not. And I'm doing different colorings because I'm going to be coloring in my frogs. And as you know, yellow and blue comes out with a different green. And I'm also adding different colors of green because I would like my little froggies to have different shapes um, on their little bodies and different coloring for their eyes and so on and so forth. So I'm adding a variety of colors and I would be mixing them in. The paper I'm using is regular paper. It's not anything specific. It's just normal paper. It's not watercolor paper. So I have to be very, very sparing on my water. Here I'm adding just the base color for my little froggies. And as you can tell, they're catty corner to one another. So the face of the froggy and the little behind of the froggy are catty corner from one another. And I'm using a flat brush with watercolor here. Those are my gelatos. And if you can kind of see what I'm doing, I'm actually not even using them very properly. I am not going very carefully over the lines because once I die cut the image, if I have a little extra green around them, that's perfect. It's not going to have that white effect around it. And so I'm not even using this brush properly. And those of you that are artists like myself, it kind of hurts us to see this because I'm really just using it blotchy. But this is the method that works really well for this because the frogs have multiple colors and tones. And as you can see, the frogs, that, as I mentioned, they're catty cornered to one another. So if you're going to be putting one color in on one of the front of the frogs, then put the same kind of coloring in on the back of the same frog. You do not want your frogs to look different from the front and back. And since this is a kind of bookmark that has a front and back to it from the same animal, you kind of want to keep it as close to it as possible. So here I added more yellow. See that? So now that's the back of the animal, the back of the little frog. So I'm adding more yellow there. And I'm using the green ones first and then the bunnies are going to come later and, you know, so on and so forth, just because I'm working with this uh, color segment. And I have my little sponge to dab her off the extra water because, again, this is not watercolor paper. So I use very, very little water. This way, your paper will not crumble. It's not going to start uh, fading away. It's not going to start to have little fuzzy edges or anything like that. See, and I'm just showing you the difference between, you know, one frog and the other frog when you color it in. Again, I'm adding the same colors. And don't be afraid to go outside of the line. It'll be cut off. So you could be as messy as you want. This is kind of nice. You don't have to be exact. <laughs> so this kind of project is perfect for kids or perfect for people that don't have the best dexterity in terms of staying within the lines. But you can personalize your cute little animals. See, like right over here, I'm adding different coloring to the, the parts of the frog, like the eyes and the cheek. And this way, it really will have a personality. And then you will see towards uh, further down the video, I'm actually going to do a lot more to them. So hang in there. It's not going to be all water coloring and things like that. So here I've added from the Stampin' Up! collection that I have just regular red color. See, because some frogs have red in them. If you look at some frogs from the Amazon or get some ideas, they have blue and red and green and yellow. They're so beautiful. Maybe that's why I like them. <laughs> They're really, really cute. And see, I added the base color. Now I'm adding some more watercolor. So I am mixing different medias. So if you start off with, for example, uh, a stamping um, brush and you just brush on your color and then add the water uh, color onto it, that's okay. You can do that. Later on, you'll, you'll see I'm going to actually be using a pen over some of these as well. Just dab around that extra water. And see, look, I am kind of going messy. <laughs> and I'm really pressing that brush onto my project to pull up all the extra water and fanning it to make sure it's dry. You don't want it too wet. And honestly, there's, this brush is a super inexpensive brush. I mean, this thing was like 20 cents. So this is why I'm not careful with this. It's, 
it's not good quality, but it works perfect for this project. So you don't have to use your expensive uh, brushes whatsoever. And now you see how certain frogs look really almost not even frog looking because it has so many different colors. Well, that's okay. Seriously, if you're not sure how to color in your frog, you really can go wrong. Look on some pictures, um, you know, on the internet for some Amazon photos of frogs and you'll be amazed. <laughs> now, coloring the bunnies is a little bit different because most of us think of cute little white bunnies. So how do you put white on white? So what I did is I'm using, I'm, I apologize, I went uh, kind of out of frame on some of these things and also the, the focus kind of went blurry, but I'm using kind of like a light beige color and a little bit of, of a yellow tinting color just to create different colors for the background of the bunnies. And to make the bunnies look kind of white, I actually am using the distressed black ink color to have the appearance of their white bunnies by creating the shadows. So this is what I'm demonstrating here. And as you guys know, some bunnies have blotches on them, they have spots, and some are black and white and brown and black. So you do have different color bunnies. They're not always white. And see what I'm doing here? I'm taking the tips of my brush at the edges and kind of leaving a little bit of the middle uh, white. And I'm matching up my bunnies that are going with one another to make sure that I'm going to uh, use the proper bunny to go with the correct bunny. See that one? And then I'm going to go up to the other one. And I colored in the one on the left-hand side um, on top. So disregard that because I went back actually off camera and uh, recolored it as well. So I'm just trying to give you some ideas here, not have you, you know, <laughs> watch me create all kinds of coloring effects here. But you kind of have the idea. See, they, they do match. And see the dyes? Look how easily they line up. Look at this. It's perfect. Now you're cutting four shapes instead of one each time and trying to line them up. So again, my method of doing it this way is to save some time. And I'm not showing you all the different colorings I had done because I think uh, you would be bored. <laughs> but I'm also going to give you this tip. If you have a large sheet of paper and you want to go ahead and uh, figure out how you cut that apart and make it super easy, just measure it to your die cut template. See, like right here, I'm using my uh, die cut template uh, base of my machine, which is a big shot. And I could see that I could do two sets of these little critters. So in other words, I can do four little animals in a row to uh, be able to comfortably trim them and cut them. See that? Just like so. And what helps me in this case is I can just cut the paper accordingly. So I already know where they're at. And, and the way I stamped it is I left a little bit of a room so my dies can fit in between these little guys. So I'm not going to be cutting them apart. Now here, I already know that I have four on that side, so I just decided to cut one in the middle, see, because I have already four and then one in the middle. So I'm just demonstrating it that way. And you see how the colors are going out of the, the lines? It'll help you when you cut your, your dies because you will actually have the color of the, the little critter on the edges of your image too. It doesn't have that white, hollow, you know, blank look on it. It'll have uh, the colors match and it'll all be colored in. And if not, it's okay, because we're going to fix that. <laughs> I'm going to show you that very shortly as well. Okay, so here is my uh, my acrylic block that I'm using here. And um, as you could see, it's pretty worn, but it doesn't matter because that's what happens. So line your die up, but definitely, like I said, line it up. So make sure it's the right way. And this way you can really cut your little images properly. And if for some reason your hand will move or, you know, one of your critters gets a little bit, you know, cut off a little bit. Well, it's only paper. You will have plenty of other ones, so no big deal. And also, you might be able to fix it just by coloring in the edges. See, so I'm lining them up, and I'm adding the clear acrylic block, block back on top. And this is what holds um, the two pieces of uh, items together. One is the paper, and then the other one is the die that goes on top of the paper. Just like that. And you can use washi tape to make them stick, but I'm using a magnetic plate, so it, it, it works for me great. I don't need to always use washi tape. Sometimes I use it. And just, you know, crank it through. <laughs> it's an old-fashioned one, not electronic, and super easy to cut them out. Look at that. Look at your cute little images. I love these little things. Look. You got the front and you got the back. And you see the coloring? You see how they match? So you kind of want to make sure when you cut these out, maybe put them all in a container 
um, or lay them separate so you're not going to, uh, you know, make them have a different back or a different front. And this is how the bookmark happens. Watch this. This is an add-on piece from Lawn Fawn, and I did get their paper for this because it's double-sided and it's so pretty. So one of them is the dandelion that you see, and the other one is the wood grain, and that's the little add-on piece that you can use for your little critters. And each one of them have their own shapes, obviously, because the frog's face and the bunny's face is different. You see? And because the paper is double-sided, I can literally rotate my paper and use it differently. And that's another way I can create my little little guys over here that, that'll look differently. So even if I make one cut, I can rotate the paper and put one on one side, you know, and then the same paper I just rotate and use the front of that paper and make it the back of the other or vice versa. So in other words, if I have a front image on one of my papers, I can make that the back for the other paper. Now here, what I did do is I took my X-Acto knife and I made those little holes in the middle a little bit longer because they are, um, they are there. It's, it's part of the, the die cut, but for some reason, my machine is older, so it has nothing to do with the product. It's just, you know, your machine, how it works. Um, I did put a slit on them in the middle there. So the little critters can go through a lot easier and you'll see what I mean in just a second. And here we're going to personalize the little critters. And by the way, if you saw me last time, I did put back the cap on my exacto knife. So please make sure you do that. Do not ever leave it off, even for one second. They're very, very sharp, and you don't want to have a, a hot error and a mess and blood all over your work. So please be careful. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> so anyways, now you see my little uh, container on the right-hand side. I got all these different kind of colored pens. And they're just regular coloring pens, you know, that, I, that I'm using. And what I'm doing here is I'm going through um, different colors, you'll see, and I'm edging the little frog's feet, its little body. And what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm creating uh, his little shape to be more uh, noticeable. And this way, uh, each one will look different because on some of them, I will do this. On others, I won't do it. Uh, also, on the different coloring that I'm using, I can change what they look like. So check this out. Watch, I'm going to be modifying their faces and you will see that as you saw earlier in the video, um, how I have different faces on. You could change their faces. They don't have to look the same. You could totally make them look different, which is absolutely adorable that way. You can add little eyelashes. You can, you can have open mouths. You can have uh, little, little cheekbones that you define. You can have little facial whiskers or you can even put little mustaches on them, you know. Here, I'm just defining his little mouth and adding some more colors on top of his little eyes. Because if you've ever seen uh, little frogs, they have adorable characteristics. I mean, I don't know if you guys ever owned a frog or not. I certainly have. And they really are cute little critters. <laughs> I really like them. So here we have, see, that's the little piece right there that I cut uh, open earlier, just a, a little bit longer than originally it is on the die. And that little piece right there, you see that? That's the one that goes right inside of that um, secondary paper because that's what's holding the little critter onto your bookmark. And the little feet, you don't have to glue down. Actually, you shouldn't glue down because that's what's going to be holding onto your paper. So when you have your bookmark, the little feet are holding onto the paper. By the way, you guys, if you hear snoring, I apologize. My dog is a snorer. So if you hear this background noise, I swear I'm not snoring and I'm not a ventriloquist, but you will definitely hear her snore in the background every so often. So anyhow, what I'm doing here is you saw on the front of the frog, this is really important with your, your little critters for this project. If you're adding any coloring onto the front, you want to continue and add the same kind of coloring on the back as well. Otherwise, and when you turn over the bookmark, it will look like the, you know, the front and the back, they don't belong. So if you add a little yellow to the front, add a little yellow to the back. If you add um, green edges or whatever color edges you add to the front, do the same thing on the back. So here I'm really defining my little frog. It has those cute little spots on the back end. And I'm adding a few little blotches and dots because... As you know, frogs have warts and you know, they have blotches and they have dots and they have shimmers and shine. So what I'm doing is I'm adding these things to the front, different body areas, and also to the back. You can uh, definitely use um, glitter. You certainly can emboss these. Uh, so there's so many ways that you can make your little uh, froggies 
very unique and your little critters, your elephants, your sloths, you know, your bunnies, you could really personalize them. So they will not look the same over and over. So watch this. Now we have the little guy in the front and I'm going to be gluing him onto my um, extra piece here that is the cutout that actually becomes the bookmark right there. And I'm adding the glue to the back of the frog and I'm doing this so it'll have a nice strong hold. See, just like that. And what I'm doing here now is I'm adding some of that onto the bottom piece of of the body of the frog that went through my piece of paper. And you wanna do that because you don't want this little critter to come off in the middle of being used. Um, they do uh, make good bookmarks. They're not very strong because they're petite. You know, these are decorative items, but they work really, really well. And see what I'm doing now too, is I'm adding extra glue so the little feet are attached properly because if you guys are readers, I'm a reader. I love books and I, I treasure my books. I don't want them to get damaged. So if you have little pieces that are coming up or they're not glued down properly, it could scratch the inside of a book. Um, you know, it might damage the book. And I do have some older books that I treasure very much. They, they may or may not be collector's books, but I really like them and, you know, I, I keep them. I mean, obviously, if you have a book you don't care about, you might not even use a bookmark. <laughs> But I care about my books. So always make sure when you're putting these things together, they're nice and sturdy and, uh, you know, glued down very properly, especially on the back end, because the front little paws are the ones that are holding the actual page like you saw earlier in my video. See, look, so here I left out, you see there, I, I um, added the extra line for the back end of the frog and you can leave it off. You don't have to put it back on there. Um, you don't have to enhance it, but here I decided to enhance it to make it, you know, kind of pop out a little bit more. And this way also remember when I said, if you have a little bit of a white edge, because maybe your hand moved or the die was not set up properly in your machine, you know, and your, your image had a little white outline. Well, this is how you could fix it. Super easy. See the little feet. They're so cute. Those are the ones that hold the paper and you just add a ribbon, whatever color you wish. Place the cap on your glue. That way it will not dry out and you can use it properly next time. See, just like that. So anyhow, I'm showing you one more time how to assemble the little guys. And you put on the front and then you put on the back. See, just like so. It already has the glue on there. And uh, he looks a little bit different as well. Look, he's got little red chin and his eyes are looking the other way. That's another way you could personalize, like I mentioned earlier. See, look at those eyes. Sorry, a little bit out of focus there. My camera decided to pick up the background for a hot moment. But look, look at its little bum bums. See that? Pink and, and orange. And, you know, you can have purple frogs. You know, look them up in colors. They're really cool. And watch this. I'm adding little eyelashes. Not because frogs have eyelashes. Well, I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I don't know. <laughs> It's just to make them cute. And don't forget, this is like a caricature. So when it comes to caricature, it's technically okay to make it look uh, not real, <laughs> but very caricature kind. And that's another way you can make them look very different. And see, I already went over the outside with one color, but when you do a light color first and a dark color, then it creates kind of like a, an extra shading. See that? You can still see the yellow come through. And it's a very kind of a nice little image to, to put on your project. And I'm outlining its little mouth and I'm making it different from what it is uh, initially. And this way, all my little bookmarks really, really did look different. So whoever received them, they felt very special because each one was handmade. Now, um, as you're watching my video in this, uh, this project, you could see that my nail polish color is changed. Well, it's because this was like a three months of a time that I, I actually made these little bookmarks because uh, time was not on my side <laughs> and I was busy. And also because you had to wait in between the uh, coloring to have the paper dry. So when I'm using watercolor, you cannot uh, put the next color on immediately if you you know you want your watercoloring to not blend together. So you have to wait until your paper dries because again, this is not watercolor paper. This is regular paper I'm using. So even though you use very little water, 
you don't want that paper to crumble and you know come up in the corners and the edges because your your project is ruined. This is why I made so many different uh, stamps of these little frogs and and the bunnies and the elephants and the sloths. So just in case if I ruin a few of them and I can't make them work, I have extras to work with. But luckily, I didn't ruin any of them, so I got to use every single one of them. <laughs> so I was very happy about that. So look at that beautiful paper. And uh, here we go again, and uh, gluing it down in the back part and gluing that as well. And see how the red in this case is the back of this project? Well, you could turn that around and make the red on the front and your little froggy is again on a different background. So this is why I like to use double-sided paper. Okay, so let's go back to the bunnies for a hot minute here. <laughs> so you see, I am uh, showing you here the uh, the background dies that were cut out and as you could see for the frogs and for the bunnies they're different shapes because obviously the bunnies have <laughs> ears <laughs> so <laughs> and the frogs don't have ears you know not like the bunnies do at least so you will see that your uh, background shape that you're putting your your bunnies on will be a different image so that is really easy and you you can't really confuse the dies and the paper that you're going to be cutting out so here I'm adding a gray tone to the bunny and I'm outlining him with the gray and I'm also coloring in the middle part of the ear, that blank space. I just wanted to do it that way, but I'm also going to do that the same way in the back. Remember, we said whatever you do in the front, try to be very similar to the back as well so it kind of blends in your project looks like they belong together. And here you see you have these little cotton tail. So you can do a lot with a little cotton tail. You can literally take a piece of cotton ball and glue it onto the tail. But what we mentioned earlier, if it's going to go into a book, you don't want to have protrude out too much. Now, if it's going to be hung up or you're using it for a card, then you certainly can do that. Um, you can put glitter on his little, you know, cotton tail bunny, little bunny cotton tail. <laughs> um, you can use different uh, kinds of uh, pens that have liquid in them that could raise up or uh, stickles or something, uh, different products. And here you will see what I will be using. Now on this front of the bunny, I do have this silver pen. And when uh, you hold it up to the light or when you uh, twist the actual image, you can see the silver very much on it. So I figured this is like a gray kind of white bunny. So I'm giving him little, you know, little darker areas and shading him in. And again, it's just a matter of how you want your image to look. And I'm adding in a few little areas on the back and the back of the ear and the head because I really want to make sure my bunny, you know, looks cute. <laughs> so, and again, it's personal touches. And, you know, you can characterize these little guys any way you want to. And, you know, you don't have to make them bunny colors. I mean, you can make this guy, you know, blue and put a blue bunny in there, kind of like the ice cream, you know, a <laughs> blue bunny. <laughs> but you could do any colors you want. So don't let yourself be limited. And especially with your children. I mean, I'm sure they can get so much more creative than us adults can. And here I'm just taking the blue pen for the little blue eyes for the bunny. But you can make one, I have blue color and the other one green. You know, you can do pretty much any color you wish. And uh, here I'm also adding on some extra uh, coloring to the nose so it stands out. And uh, it's again, this is how you personalize them. You can put eyelashes on these guys as well. You can make them look one way or the other or actually alter the eyes. And there are many different ways you can alter the eyes. You can do like half shape moon, um, you know, and, and do another half shape moon together and then do like an arch and then, and then that's your eye. So there are a lot of different uh, tutorials on how to do eyes or if you guys want me to show you one time how to do different caricature eyes, let me know. I certainly can do that for you. But, uh, you know, you can't go wrong. <laughs> so now you see how this uh, this little bunny looks so cute on this little ye yellow background. It just, you know, he just pops. I mean, to me, it's just adorable looking. And by the way, um, some of these bookmarks I have already given away and people were so happy to receive them and seen them and everything. So they brought so much joy to the folks that have received them. So it really is uh, very I, I think it's a very rewarding feeling when you give something that people like. And also it just, you know, the smiles that you create, you know, even to random people at the grocery store. Oh, here, have a bookmark. And people go, what? Really? Thank you. It's just a nice way of saying thank you, you know, and uh, now you can travel and, you know, go back, 
you know, different places, different uh, states or different countries. And you can do a whole bunch of little of these little bookmarks and put them in your in your uh, wallet or something and give them away. It's just really nice. Now you see this pen here. I'm adding a dot onto my paper. And the reason I'm doing that is two things. I want to make sure my pen is working properly. And again, I apologize. The focus is a little bit out. My camera decided to focus on the pens down below versus what I'm doing here. But I'm adding the, uh, the material onto the cotton tail part of this bunny. And that little dot that I have there, see that one right there? When that dries, I know that my little cotton tail has also dried. So instead of me trying to touch my project to see if it dried or not, this is a great tip for me to you to go ahead and just touch one little piece of of a dot that you have on your paper and see if that indeed dried or not. And of course, don't forget to clean your pen so it will not clog. That's very important because these things do clog if you don't keep them, you know, properly uh, cleaned after you uh, dispense your product. But see, right there, make sure you hold it on top. <laughs> don't ruin don't ruin the little cotton tail part, see? So I'm leaving this little bunny here and the dot right there. So if I want to see when that little cotton tail dries, I just touch the dot on the left. So if I touch the dot on the left, I'm not ruining my project. If the dot is dry, so is my little cotton tail. And this is a good tip for me to you to use so you're not keep touching your project and smearing it. So here I'm adding a little bit of yellow. You're going, what? Yellow to the bunny? What are you doing? But again, you know, and I'm demonstrating it. I almost touched the, the bunny, but I, <laughs> the one with the cotton tail that has the product on there. But I was careful, so I just pointed out, nope, it's not dry yet. But see, I added the yellow because the yellow and the brown creates a very nice little effect. So I'm making this bunny a very different color. I did put a little base color on him, but I decided to make him a very dark little bunny because, you know, when I was a kid, I had a very beautiful chocolate bunny and I just absolutely loved him. And he was just the best little pet I could ever have. So this is like a little thing, you know, automatically I was like, oh, I'm going to have a little dark bunny. And he had a very light face, almost like this. And for some reason, my hand just went and did that. And then I realized, oh, it looks like my bunny from childhood. <laughs> so it just kind of did it. <laughs> All right. So time for the elephants and the sloths, you guys. And these are some of the things that you saw in the uh, video before. And that's what it uh, is on on here it was also part of the video in the beginning on the coloring and as you see here uh, you can add little hearts you can add all kinds of little uh, different color colors of paper flowers you can stamp the images out you can personalize them you can add eyelashes wrinkles onto them pretty much anything that you want to the sloths come in different colors I had mentioned earlier in this video which kind of surprised me that they're actually green sloths but there are. So uh, just get creative. You can add all kinds of images. And like I said, you know, watercolor them. And like this one is watercolored. I think I mentioned that in the beginning of the video. And you have to wait until the color is dry. And of course, uh, once they dry, you can certainly, you know, add on different colors and just layer, layer away and enjoy. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed my little tutorial and uh, I hope you like these little things and uh, and you're going to make your own and create your own. And I hope one day my card art will become your card art. And I always love your feedback, your comments and your subscriptions. So thank you so much. I try to respond to all of you guys. Um, I really do. I work some crazy long hours, but I try to do my best. So you guys, thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to your comments and hugs to everybody. Take care. Bye.